Hi Stakes, welcome to a brand new episode of High Stakes. Today, we are going to do something special. We're gonna test something out, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm old. And I like old things. Some of the things I like that are old are steaks. That goes back to the dawn of time where we just bit into a cow and didn't even cook it. But what else I like is talking about interesting topics. So that's what we're gonna do. Brian and I have both prepared what we believe are three predictions for YouTube in 2023. And to pair with those three predictions, we have three different stakes, which we don't get to know what they are until the end of the video. But we do know they're going to be from Snake River Farms, mm. Grand Western Steaks, mm. okay? And unbeknownst to me before the starting of the filming of this video, Walmart. And it's Wagyu. <laughs> they're all flaming yawns of Wagyu. Wag is it, no, it's Wagyu. Wagyu. Bro, oh, I, wagyu, don't I don't know. I'm just, I just eat it. Tastes okay? the same. <laughs> I'm not a professional at this. I just eat the steak. Bro, I'm surprised. When, you, when we said Walmart, I thought, okay, like maybe Prime or Choice, Select. When we said Walmart, I, I said, surely you jest. <laughs> <laughs> surely you jest. <laughs> but no, we actually have Walmart today. And it's Japanese Wagyu from Walmart yeah. you can get. What I'm wondering, that little cow part where we bit into fresh cows, did you prep that or was that just all? Oh, that was just all the time yeah, I, can, I, I can tell. I was hoping everyone wasn't. Tell. Yeah, flamingly yawning. All right, bro, I'm giddy. I don't know what happened, but as soon as you said, all right, are you guys ready to roll? Like, I got all shaky and excited. Yeah, I'm ex because we're about to eat meat, bro. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> we're about to eat meat. Okay, what's the first one? Do yeah, we get to I'm know? I'm trying to act all elegant and elitist, but really I just want to bite into a steak right now and just, that's what I want to do. And they're filet mignons. All of these are filet mignons. Filet mignons. <laughs> <laughs> I got them. <laughs> yeah, we've already filet said mignons. that. Let's start cooking, bro. Let's start cooking. All right, let's bring out this first steak. Before we go on, this thing, Used to work, it's supposed to scare away mice, but it fell and now in the wind, it just like... Oh no. No, it does still scare mice, just emotionally. <laughs> now they're rejected. <laughs> like, that's one freaky owl. <laughs> no, owls do that, you realize that, right? They, Not a they, full like... 180. Yeah! Bro, where's my phone? Someone stole 180s? It. No, they can do like... They can do like 360s, bro. Can an owl turn its head 180 <laughs> degrees? Owls can rotate their heads and necks up to 270 Told degrees. Told you. <laughs> hey. That's the next thing. Oh, you got gotcha. me. That's the next thing on the menu. <laughs> owl steaks. No, it's not. Could you eat an owl? Why not? It's got breast meat. It's got leg meat, wing meat, thigh meat. Your first. Ooh. Steak. So this right here is the first steak that we have. I have some impressions already. I know where it's from. I already know, bro. Not telling you though. I'm not telling you either, but I will say rednecks love it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is supposed A5? They're all A5, right? <laughs> Sam has no idea, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I've <purchased> A5. <laughs> oh, check out the marbling on that. Is that good marbling? It's good, but it doesn't look like A5 marbling. It does not look like A5 marbling to me, to be perfectly honest with you. No. It looks like it looks like a lot of a lot of meat to fat ratio. What is it? A5. It's like the highest it's like one of the Here's the thing. I'll nerd out. There's A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, <clears throat> but then there's also what's called a BMS scale when it comes to the marbling, how marbled it is. So this is gold grade. I've just been informed. Okay, so I know where this is from now. All right, you can't give him this information then because he knows too much about steak. Okay, so how are you going to cook this? Okay, so this Wagyu, normally you're just supposed to do a little bit of salt. You don't really need to oil the pan because of the fattiness of it, but this looks like it could use a little bit of oil. It's not that fatty because it's yeah, filet mignon. Like it's fat. tender. So I'm actually going to put a little bit of oil. Don't look at my secret stash. All right, so all we're going to do is we're going to put some salt. Salt that sucker up nice and good. Uh, do you have is pepper? That, is that good salt? Pink Himalayan salt. Oh, too much, bro. <laughs> Way too much. I told you, man. I'm all giddy, right? We have a full cart of options over here. Okay, let's go. That's all. Yeah, I'm just salt and pepper. So we're just keeping it simple. Salt and pepper. That's I don't good. care for pepper. I'm going to be honest with you. You don't want pepper on I'm it? I'm not a pepper boy. Because <laughs> <don't know> <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make sense. So I you don't want don't pepper? I don't like pepper. You just want salt? I just want salt. So these are thick. Mamacitas those are, right those here. Those are pretty thick, yeah. Gonna be honest, I don't think I've ever, I've never, I've never cooked filet mignon. I don't think we've ever done filet mignon on the skillet. Filet mignon. <laughs> you got me, bro. You keep saying you keep... filet mignon. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna keep, to keep the consistency the same. All we're doing is salt, pepper, no butter finish. If you we... really want pepper, you can do pepper. No, it's fine. 
I, I can't. Don't want to hear, I, don't want, I don't want to hear about it all night. No, all I'm saying is we're going to keep it simple. Salt, pepper, <laughs> yeah, or yeah. just salt. No butter, because we want the meat to speak for itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you add butter, that changes the profile a little bit. Yeah, but I also want to. I also want it to taste good. If it's a good piece of meat, it'll just, just salt. taste good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. You get to experience the full beef. You're smoking that oil, bro. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, ready? Ooh. Okay. So as he's cooking these steaks, Brian, I want you to start us off with your first prediction for YouTube in 2023. What do you think is going to unfold? What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is important? What do you think creators should focus on? So my prediction, first prediction is the rise of Which, Megadeth. No. Oh, okay. Besides that, the rise of an old popular format, vlogs. Interesting. High production stuff is going to turn into low fi like low high production. Taking away the appearance of a high production and more of like this vlog style, mm -hmm. kind of you're just chilling mm -hmm. with me yeah. style. Just because what I'm seeing right now. So what, yeah, what does that look like to you? Example is Iraq, for example. Mm -hmm. That's is, pretty high production. But it doesn't look like he doesn't have sets. He doesn't have like, he I does, but saying. it doesn't. You, it, like, like, it's yeah. not a super polished product. Yeah. The story, the, what he's telling, what he's doing is really good. Like Ryan Trahan. Like Ryan Trahan. Who knows how much pre production he does, mm. but I'm just seeing like, you can't compete with Mr. Beast. Like, yeah. No one's, so, but you can see that you can't compete with him in a different fashion. And I, yeah. the way I'm seeing a lot of creators that are doing well are not big budget appearing mm -hmm. videos. Yeah, I think that's interesting. I, I would I would say if there's any terminal any terminology for that, like high production vlogs almost is what it, what it yeah, can be. Yeah, I don't know how to term it, but yeah, to term it. Yeah. I, I would agree with you. I think there's there's a, there's definitely a space, and obviously Ryan Trahan has proved that to a large degree with mm -hmm. his Penny series and, and a lot of his other series. If there's any terminal any terminology for that, like high production vlogs, almost is what it, what it yeah, can be. Yeah, I don't know how to term it, but yeah. yeah, I would agree with you. I think there's there's a there's definitely a space, and obviously Ryan Trahan has proved that to a large degree with mm -hmm. his Penny series and, and a lot of his other series, and where you have this you have this type of content that has an overarching narrative but the individual inside of that narrative is actually experiencing that so there's like this element of you're setting up the stakes but you're like living through it to a degree you you're, know what i mean you, yeah you're experiencing it with them you are you you're in that moment with them because when it's too productiony too like you're on a set you're just kind of like yeah you can go to netflix and watch a high production show if you want but that's yeah. not what people come to youtube yeah i mean i think that's Definitely, yeah, so okay, so it's like, uh, we can, let's call it this, a high concept blog, where, you know, we, we could say that Ryan Trahan is relatively responsible for uh, creating or at least popularizing that genre, where it's mm -hmm. like Team Edge just did one of those, right? Yeah. With, with Joey being blind for four days, 100 hours? <laughs> yeah, 100, yeah, 100 hours. hours. Blind. <laughs> yeah, and in vlog, like real, like it's not like yeah. doctored, it's not fake. I think for a long time, clickbaity thumbnails where it's like yeah. oh it looks like something cool but then you click in it it's not anything like the thumbnail yeah. those worked for a while to get that attention but i think overall like people have lost trust in those yeah well it's yeah it, it's because everyone and their mother has like wanted to emulate mr beast and what mr beast has done is he's basically like leveled up the game show or like challenge genre right and like i've honestly seen this across so many different genres is like what you'll see is like you'll see this genre start off in this really authentic way at, at, at the beginning or let's say as this new genre is kind of formed or starts to become popularized and then what you have is you have these players come in and then they like really add a lot of high production value or they add like effectively a mode of storytelling or production value that essentially transcends all the rest of the creators, and then all of the rest of the creators attempt to emulate that because that's like clearly a winning formula. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I've seen that with like vlogs, right? Where you had vlogs, and vlogs were kind of universally like this rough, authentic, um, albeit stretched out narratives in content, but then you had Casey Neistat jump in and kind of change the game. And now a lot of the vlogs that you see are really, really high production value. Like people are flying around drones, people are, you know, really clearly planning out 
you know, every small little bit of yeah, their they're blog. They're storyboarding, or like. They're storyboarding, or they're getting to the place in the edit where they're, you know, have these narrative structures. And that's like, that's great and all, but that's like where you see the beginning of something start, where it's like, you would just kind of upload a, a, a collection of clips together of your day, mm -hmm. and now it's in into these really crafted stories. Like one's not better than the other, but I've seen this this exact same thing happen across genres, right? Where it's like Team Edge, where Team Edge started, where it's like these really authentic, just goofy dudes in challenges, similar thing to Dude Perfect, and then all of a sudden it's escalated into like people buying islands. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 and it gets saturated and, and everybody's doing the same, nothing special, nothing different, nothing yeah. like, I've seen it a hundred times, you know. That's my first prediction where I think you're gonna see a lot more, hey, just chill, We're just, it's just a chill production, but in the back, you know, like, okay, this took a lot of time, a lot of money, a, yeah. lot, of, a lot of effort. So to get. my question to you is, do you think story is an integral part of the high concept vlog? Yes. Can 100%. You, do you think a, a high concept vlog can be story resistant? Like for instance, I think Mr. Beast can make videos that are story resistant. And in that, what I mean by that is, is the fact that some of his videos really don't have an underlying story in them. There's just pretty much a series of events that are happening. I don't, they're, they're, he, he, you always leave his videos feeling good, like for another person. Like people don't like to- Ryan people, Trahan? No, I'm talking about Mr. Beast. Like, like when he's giving stuff away and you can see the joy on somebody's mm -hmm. face that I can pay my bills now. It's like you leave feeling like, oh, I'm happy for that person. Like, so even though it's not a, maybe like a full on narrative, you leave, oh, I feel. Yeah, I, I think that's the difference though. That's the kind of the difference that I'm trying to highlight between Ryan Trahan mm, and okay. a lot of Mr. Beast content. A lot of Mr. Beast content doesn't necessarily have an overarching narrative. It's not necessarily saying Correct. something. Yeah, I think yeah, his yeah. most recent video with um, curing blindness. I think that does have a, more of a like a moral stance and more of like a an underlying theme throughout the video that says something. But like you look at Ryan Trahan's videos, and most of his videos have a very clear and crafted uh, underlying emotional structure to it that 100%. leaves you by the end of the video really having a clear idea of what is this saying. Rather yeah. than, you know, a lot of Mr. Beast content, which is hits. You know, you get hits of joy, hits of dopamine, right? Yeah. And like, obviously that's very clearly effective. Oh, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? for sure. My question is like, can you separate the high concept vlog from the story? I think you can, but then you're not gonna have sustained success. Like you can get one that'll pop off that like people are interested and curious, but I think the ones that are gonna have long-term yeah. success are gonna have yeah. narrative story as an integral part. Cause they yeah. know, when people come back, they know why they're coming back. You know what's interesting now that I, I think about it is I would say a lot of the vlogs that I've seen that have been story resistant have been like David Dobrik's vlogs, right? Mm -hmm. They're like clip shows yeah. and they can only be so long, right? Before, yep. you know, it's not really watchable anymore. It, like that's why he does four minutes and that's why I think the format of four minutes really worked with David Dobrik. When yeah, because yeah, it. so that's how that's how you can combat that. Or yeah, not worry about that. One of my predictions for 2023 is along a very similar notion. I would say classify it as authentic content, right? Um, and what I mean by that is, I think we're going to see a huge influx of authentic content across a couple different modes of making content, right? We're seeing a huge burst of podcasts, for instance, mm -hmm. I think is gonna start to get bigger and bigger. I wouldn't be surprised if YouTube makes something uh, like a feature more explicit for podcasts, mm. right? And I think that that's a really authentic type of content because it's like people talking, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like people actually having a conversation and like sharing ideas. Have you heard of this steak channel that kind of does? Uh... <laughs> That's one of the reasons why we're doing this, right? Is because I, you know, we think that's a trend. We think it's a, well, not a trend, but we think it's a, I would say a trend, but it's like a long tail we're, trend. Yeah, but look, who doesn't want to eat this? Yeah, that was, well, that smells vegans. so good. Vegans don't, wanna don't want that, to eat that, yeah. <laughs> they're probably throwing up right now, but hey, <laughs> this, this channel's not for you then. <laughs> no, there are some vegans that watch us that are like, you really? know, that, well, yeah, of course, because there are a ton of vegans that can't eat meat. But want to have, eat meat? Yeah, because okay. of health issues. Okay, that's different. I'm talking about <laughs> the ones that are choosing. Don't forget about your Oh, yes, oh. thank, okay. So we got two more minutes for these things to rest. Um, mm. You wanna try some beers? So we picked out two different beers here. 
Uh, I honestly judged the book by its cover right here. And I thought this bottle was really pretty. Um, 1925, Reserva. What is it, a lager? It is an amber lager. Yeah, 6.4%. Yeah, and there's like no label on it or anything, just like kind of imprinted in the glass. And I do like that it's green. <laughs> okay, I got, I chose this uh, Shinga, the original Thai beer. Figured we're having Japanese Wagyu, Bro, somewhat in the same region. Why is this right? so sticky, dude? Where is Thailand? Do you know where Thailand is? <laughs> Why oh, butter. So I dropped sticky. it in the butter. <laughs> it's butter. Just go. It's no, butter. it's just so sticky now all over my hands. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck, dude? You're just in the butter. You put it in a stick of butter? I think it fell onto the <laughs> butter. <laughs> Try it. Let me see what okay, you think. Okay. Oh, it's waxy, not sticky. But mm. I see what you're saying. It's weird. Oh, that's interesting. It tastes more like a Pilsner. It's very it good. Tastes, to be honest with you. Honestly, it, it feels like there's like apple notes to it. Almost like a cider taste to it. What a snob. Okay, I'm just telling you like it is. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna try to... <laughs> oh, uh, uh, floral. <laughs> you can taste everything I'm saying, though. You know what? <laughs> I can taste a little bit of apple. You don't like it? That's, I like it. I don't like the bitterness, bro. It's not that bitter. It's got the personality of a bitter person. <laughs> I'm an old man sitting an on his porch, senile man. screaming at the kids to get off the lawn. <laughs> okay, Shenga? Shenga? How would you pronounce it? Shenga? I'm not gonna try. Shinga. Oh, that's a beer. That's my kind of beer. Is it? Try that, that's good. I've had That's these. a good summer beer. You want something crispy and fresh with an mm. essence of molasses? An essence of molasses? There's I no could, molasses I in that think of whatsoever. To say. I tried to say something quick without thinking. What that's think? definitely a light, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's nice. Yeah. yeah, it's good. It's it's crisp, that's a good word. That's a good word, Brian. It's like a crispy Fuji apple. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try, bro. Let's try it, Let's dude. Let's try Let's try it. You wanna go first? Cut into yours. He's got the money shot. I don't know which way, where's the... The grain? I don't, you know what's filet mignon? I don't think there really is much okay. of a... Oh, Did oh. you go between the fork? That's how you keep your knife stayed. Yeah, steady. when you're like five years old and you're learning how to use a fork. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> That's just how I've always done it. How do you do it? Let's see you do it. Okay, I wanna eat this piece right here, okay. so I'm gonna go right here. I've just never done it like that. <laughs> hey Ma, I can use my fork and knife. I want to see yours first. Yeah, I'm a, this no, feels really uncomfy. The other way, though. What are you talking about? Oh, dude, look at that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's you see. want some, you want to drizzle some salt on it? Uh, yeah. Let's see that. I, I love the crust though. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the end of it. That's pretty good though. Yeah. Mhm. Mm That's good. That's good. Mhm. Mm That's good taste. Mhm. Mm we can slice them up and then do a quick. Mhm. Mm yeah. A little too rare. How is that? Too, uh, how is I don't, that so rare? I wouldn't rare? say it's too rare. Mm -mm. I don't want to say it's too rare. Oh, okay. Right. Tastes delicious. See, I would say it's a little cold. This may not be the right way to do it, but you you know, you put the fork on the side that you want to take home with you. <laughs> to take home with you. So then, oh. I don't then, know, bro. I'm just eating, dude. I'm just putting it in my mouth. Mm. I'm only elegant with my words, not my body. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised it's that rare. I was going for more of a medium rare. Dude, that's pretty darn rare. I may have messed this one up. I don't know. I'm like, really? I, it tastes good to me. I agree. What's the difference? I mean, th look at this. Yeah, let's get a shot of this. That's definitely rare. But that's, that's that's rare. Phenomenal. It's very tasty. Why is that so good? Here's a filet mignon A5 Wagyu. Mm -hmm. I've had this before. It's familiar taste. Getting more into the center of the steak now. It's a little rare. Mm -hmm. In a good way or worse? Too much. Mm, when it gets a little too rare in the middle of the steak, you start to get a slimy it's, feeling. It's when it's cold mm -hmm. or warm. I like, I like mine warm. Yeah, it's not very warm, but even the outside of the steak, it's pretty cold outside though. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't let it rest for five minutes next time. Two, two minutes, two and a half. Oh, thank Cut you. the oh, time in half. Yeah, that would have been, I could use the meat gauge. All right, let's do a little quick sear on them. Sammy, you wanna try? This is rare though. I'll try. Just pick it up with your hand. <laughs> oh. I don't really like roast egg all that much, but like that's still really good. That's what I'm saying. Mm. That's what Do I'm you saying. have any uh, predictions about where it's from? Uh, Walmart. You think that's Walmart? I don't know. I can't make my predictions until I try all three because... We don't have to yet, do we? No, I don't have to make my prediction yet. I'll cut into yours. I'll put this one as, the, as our... Mm -hmm. You'll cut into mine? I'll show yours. Are you gonna eat all of it? You oh. have three more to go to. Two more, right? Last one we split. One more where you guys split it. Okay, well then that's clear. Yeah. A clear sign. <laughs> that's a clear sign. That's the Walmart one. Yeah, that's the Walmart one. Didn't want to buy too much of that. Or it was more expensive. <laughs> that. 
<laughs> I think I made a mistake in not using a, a meat thermometer. They may have been still too cold for the time because I cooked them for, I was like a seven minute cook. Like I said, I wanted to take a bite out of a cow directly. So this is it, as close as I'm gonna come. I'm gonna sear these. <laughs> okay, so actually in the comment section, what should I have done when it's so thick of a piece? Like that was a two inch plus thick meat. Yeah, I don't know what I could have done there. Cook longer. But then you get the outside is, <laughs> no, but look. No, check it out. Right here, I'll show you on this one. Cause if I would've cooked longer, look, this is already well done. If I would've kept cooking longer, all this. Maybe, maybe this wasn't as uh, thawed out as you thought it yeah. was. Yeah, you see all that? That's cooked <clears throat> well done. It, it would've been, all this would have been well done with a slight pink center if I would have kept cooking it. So in essence, not my fault. I take no responsibility. As one does. I'm done, so. You finished it? No, it's oh. right here. <laughs> I put that right there so that we can uh, remember what it is and vote yeah. on it. I'm a vote. <clears throat> wow, that's. Okay. I say it's Snake River Farms. I say it's Walmart. Really? No. No, yeah, you, you can't, you gotta... I say it's Walmart. To continue my prediction for YouTube, my first prediction for YouTube, I would say authentic content, right? That spans yes. across all the different formats on YouTube. And so what I mean by that is, I think we're gonna see a surge of really authentic content in YouTube Shorts specifically. Uh, and so what I mean by that is like, I think YouTube is going above and beyond right now to try and uh, increase the amount of uh, availability in their feature set for shorts. And the result of that is going to be much more, many more people using shorts on top of the fact that shorts are going to be monetized now. I think there's gonna be a lot more uh, authentic content, right? So I think what that means is more podcasts. Sorry to interrupt, bro. Okay, is that better? Yeah. This one? Yeah. You cook it thoroughly? Let's see, it's warm. Yeah, that's, I, that's what I'm saying. Mmm. Yeah. Okay. I might. No changes. No, I can change. change. I well, I'm gonna wait until the next day. Makes such a difference when it's warm. I'm telling you, we shouldn't let it rest for five minutes in the cold. No, that, that wouldn't have mattered. I, it was, the, the, the steak was colder than I thought. But if I would've cooked it longer, it would've been a well done steak with a little tiny medium center. So what I think that means in, in terms of pr predictions would be live streams, a lot more live streams, right? You think? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I think a lot more live streams. I also think a lot more podcasts, and I also think a lot more shorts. That's what I think is gonna happen. And I think that what's gonna happen is that we're gonna see a lot of that content start getting repurposed. A lot of the more long form, authentic content repurposed, right? And so this goes to the point, and I've seen the Dangy Bros do this too, right? This sort of style of uploading and then recycling in a thousand different ways, I think is going to be like the new way. And I yeah. think that's a result of the fact of the, the sub feed going away, right? I think people mm. are using the sub feed way less because the YouTube algorithm, first off, YouTube's, you know, you land on the homepage now, which is not what you're subscribed to. It's just whatever, what it's whatever they yeah. think, yeah. And it's getting pretty good. So as a result of that, now you can really start uploading a lot more stuff without ostracizing your you know base. your yeah your hardcore subscriber base because they're they're going to get served that content no matter what so if we like funnel down what an audience looks like at the very base you have like the hardcore people that are like going to watch everything you do and the middle tier you have people that are like you know, I'm a fan and like, I like the stuff, but like, I'm not, I don't want to watch everything. And then you have like the people that are just kind of like looking in a little bit, right? That middle tier is what you lose when you start uploading a lot of content consistently. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I think this is going to solve that. I think the, you're going to be able to just pump out a lot more content and it's not going to be served to that middle tier as much. It's only going to be served to the people that are going to actually click it. Correct. And I think this is a result of the sub feed slowly, slowly losing yeah, its power. The, yeah, the home page has long form yeah. and shorts. So if you're watching both, you'll get served both. If you're only watching yeah. Team Edge long form, you're only gonna get served yeah. their, our long form stuff. I love a good crust, dude. Dude, I, I saw a short the other day where the guy takes the steak and he like cuts up the top of it and the bottom of it in like these small little squares. And so the top of the steak and the bottom of the steak have like these tons of incisions. And so what he's what he did then was cook it and try to make oh. the thickest crust he could. Yeah. That it, looks so tasty to me. They do that with uh, pork, I think, pork butt. You ever seen like where they like, whose butt? Pork butt. The best part is when they scrape the top and you hear like the Just like that's what a crust sounds like when you scrape it. Next steak? Next steak. I'm right on my prediction. Maybe. 80%. Maybe. Let's see this next steak. Guys, I would love to know, if you're enjoying this up to this point, I would love to know what are some other topics you'd like Brian and I to discuss 
And what are some other guests you'd like us to have mm. on the show? What would you like to see? Who would you like to see? And uh, what would you like to hear? We should try getting a vegan on here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> no, we can. If it's not for health reasons, then we can get them on to like convert them to... <laughs> Meatism. <laughs> Meatism. So it's, it's a religion now. <laughs> okay. Now that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Bro. You see that? You see that now? Look at that marbling right there. Look okay. at that marbling. I may want to change mine from. I don't know. Snake I don't know. I, again, we're gonna have to see that last steak. Do we get to make one pivot, or we can change? No, you can change it as much okay. as you want. Okay. My gosh, look at that. Let's just sit here for five minutes and enjoy this, bro. It's like a heart. You want to sing to it? It's like a heart. I don't know why I got so excited that it's the shape of a heart. Thump, thump. Okay, so I'm gonna just test, what is this? Uh, this is the first time you're using this? No, I just wanna know how cold it is on the inside. Oh, that's cold. How cold was it? 59 degrees. That, I don't know why I asked. I don't know what I was expecting. I gotta just do a lower, slower. <laughs> how would you spell tss? T-S-S-S-S. Tss. Tss. You literally. Bro, that is a magnificent piece of meat right there. So we gotta go low and slow. Low I don't want to mess this slow. one up. Okay, this one, this one's Grand Western, or it may be Snake Rivers. You know what? I really care what it tastes like in my mouth. So why don't you chop chop? The chop chop. <laughs> All right, Brian, okay. what is your second prediction for YouTube? This one is a little more niche. Niche? Niche. You mean niche? Is that what it said? Bro, I've been saying niche in like business calls and don't say niche, bro. Are you sure? That's yeah. That's like me cutting like a child. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you say it like that, <laughs> now <laughs> niche? Oh, niche. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Niche, right? Niche. It's niche. Yeah, niche. But but my accent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Guatemalan. I don't know anything. <laughs> English is my second language. See, I can always fall back on that. <laughs> no, you Ever? can't, because it's not your second language. I learned Spanish before I learned English. <laughs> or no, I learned them at the same time, kind of. But you're terrible at both. <laughs> but I can do both. <laughs> What's more valuable, one or two, at a mediocre level? Honestly, probably you're right too. Hey, when I'll I went concede. into when I went into job interviews, be like, hey, I speak Spanish. Can I get a twenty percent raise? <laughs> okay. Ninety <laughs> percent okay. of the time it worked. <laughs> this one's obviously a much higher. I don't think these these were both A five. They're not both A five. Only one is A five, one is gold grade, and the other is like the BM whatever you know we're talking about. Bowel movement. So like BM eight to nine. Or whatever. So this is the one that we could only buy one of. Clearly. So it's either Snake Rivers or Grand Western. Can't be Walmart. It can't be Walmart. But okay, doesn't mean Walmart made it. This just means they're selling it. But I can't see Walmart selling. Have you been to Walmart? Yes. I was just there this morning. Joey was shopping. <laughs> I was trying to mess with them. What? <laughs> Joey was shopping at Walmart and yeah. then you went there to mess I tried with to, them? I tried to go steal his cart. And I what was... is your job? <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I was trying to do. All right, I'm putting this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sizzle this sucker. <laughs> sizzle this sucker. Another alternate channel name. Sizzle this sucker. <laughs> sizzle, sizzle, sizzle the sucker. S sucker sizzle? No, sizzle suckers? No. Oh. Sizzle suckers. <laughs> So too hot. That's gonna overcook. Oh! oh. <laughs> Whoops. Drops it in, bro. But see, look at the difference. This has a lot more fat than yeah. marbling. I put some olive oil to help it, but it's got so much fat that it doesn't need it. It look creates it. a barrier of protection. Look at that. My guy. Yeah. This. Okay. I'm gonna, oh! It bit back. It bit, it bit back. <laughs> okay. Your question was the next one. Your second prediction. Just like when we started Team Edge, yeah. the challenge segment was small, right? Dedicated. Channels. The the channel, or excuse me, the challenge uh, genre. genre. Yeah, golf. Golf. I know. Hey, it, it, just hear me out. I'm. I, I was so, hearing. Yeah. So golf is the next category because everything's traditional. You watch it on TV, PGA Tour players, and all that stuff. Just because I'm in it, it's been priming for it, and now it's starting to like really blow up. Okay. And I think in the next three to five years, if you're a golfer, you will see that a lot of content you're going to be ingesting or digesting. No, ingesting. Consuming is going to be on <laughs> I was just YouTube. Gonna let you get there. <laughs> it's just going it's, it's going to be coming onto YouTube. That's my prediction. Oh, <laughs> okay. Let me no. ask you this. Let okay. me ask you this. By what factor of growth? So right now, one of the top channels, yeah, like the top channel, is about five million views a month. Mm -hmm. Compared to in our category, Team Edge category, there's not a lot. You're not the top channel. Yeah. So in the golf world, they are the top channel. It's a group of friends. Yeah. Doing golf challenges, golf matches. Yeah. They're the top channel. They're the top. They're like they're like rock stars in the golf community. So how do you know that that's not reached saturation? Because more and more people are jumping on it, that mm -hmm. are following that. Like they have good growth. 
still. Yeah, yeah, they're still. I mean, they're, some they're doing. They're pumping out hour-long videos. Yeah. That are gaining like a million, two million views. Hour-long videos. Hour-long videos. Hour-long videos. Hour-long, hour and a half plus. Like these are like long that are getting tons. Mm. So you can just imagine the RPMs yeah. on it are just ridiculous. They've only been around for maybe two, a year and a half or so. So they're getting five million with a the small. They've only cap. been around for a year and a half. Year and a half, yeah. So they've blown up. It's growing rapidly. They've surpassed cha golf channels that have been around for a long time. Yeah. That have predominantly been more of like instructional. Do this to do better. Do this. But yeah, they're more yeah. now the golf entertainment. Come watch us play some fun golf. Do some fun challenges. So what does that consist of? Golf entertainment. If you want to watch professional golf, you go watch the PGA Tour on TV. Yeah. But now it's like everyday people. Like when I when we do, it, it's like we play. We do challenges. Challenges, yeah. games. Like it's almost like it's not so serious. Where in golf, when you watch golf, it's like yeah, it's very everybody, serious. Everybody so quiet. To Here, you know, we're talking trash. We're laughing at each other. We're having a good time. Yeah. We'll have you know a beer on the course. So it's like much more relaxed. Like yeah. you're hanging out with friends. Like you're but golfing. Fun. But golf. Yeah, it's like you're hanging out with friends, but eating a steak. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I got to pay attention to this. Oh, we're good. <laughs> okay. I hope I don't mess this one up. I hope you don't mess it up too, bro. And I have no control on the matter. Oh, look, check this out. Check this out. <gasps> oh, that looks Whoa. so pretty. But see, look at that though. See, it's not getting deep. See, the, the line is right there. It's lower, lower I, heat. I got to lower it, yeah. I like that crust though. Golf is normally very like traditional, stuck up, like only like kind of like elitist type of yeah. deal. Well, it, it like, can golf ever not be elitist? Like realistically, just simply because there's such a huge, tremendous cost, like an a barrier of entry, right? Like you gotta it's, buy it's, clubs. It's you not gotta... as high as you think. Okay, well, uh, this is what I think. Let's mm -hmm. see if I'm right or, or wrong, right? I've even golfed with you. I don't remember any of this stuff. <laughs> wow. Let me. <laughs> No, I don't remember the cost. I think you just handled it all for me. I thought you meant like, I don't even remember the experience. No, so. I remember the experience. I beat you. How could I forget? I don't remember that part. So, so let me let me assume this. The, the cost of the golf bags are like maybe like, you could go from anywhere from like $250 probably to $1,000, probably to like $30,000 for like golf clubs, right? Yeah. You so go, let's you say go minimum. Two hundred fifty dollars for don't don't tell me if I'm wrong yet. Let's say you don't do that. Let's say you rent it. Let's say that's like fifty bucks for the day. Let's cut that in half. Let's say it's twenty five bucks for the day to rent, and then you got to play and and pay for the course, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say that's another like twenty five bucks, right? So my assumption is that if I wanted to go golf, let's say eighteen holes, it's going to cost me fifty bucks. Depends where you go. <laughs> Not that far no. off. Okay, but you're right. So you can fifty you, bucks? No, no. If you go to a nicer course, like here, eat the, a steak. <laughs> the, the local course here is about like maybe I think eighteen to twenty five bucks. But you're right. You can go. How buy, much does it cost to rent clubs? I don't know. You can buy. You, a, don't know. you can buy. A, you can buy a full set at Walmart for like two hundred bucks. Like golf bag, golf clubs. It is more expensive, right? Yeah. If you go it's play basketball, sport. you just buy a pair of shoes. Yeah, a basketball, and you can go to the court for free. So mm -hmm. it is more expensive. It's an elitist thing, but so many sucky people play golf, and that's why like all you see is pro. So it may not get as like, hey, these guys are getting 50, 60 yeah. million views, but the value of a golf view is substantially higher. Oh, because yeah, because okay, it's a niche. Well, because it's elitist. Because, no, it's, well, I, what I mean by that is there's money in it. There's, yeah, you, people know you have to spend money to play the sport. Yeah. So we're gonna advertise. Yeah. So that, to buy the CPMs that you are buy. higher. Yeah. Yeah, so there might be less views overall, but the people who are getting the views are making bank. And that's interesting. That's an interesting thought, that's for sure. My question to you before we move on to mine is then what is the factor of growth that you expect? Are you expecting like 10% growth in that genre or are you expecting 50% growth in, in the year of 2023? In the year 2023, I would say based on certain events that have just recently happened, <laughs> I say because what does that mean? <laughs> so normally it sounds like insider trading. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's, com it's if you if you watch golf, you can you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. More major corporations are putting money into oh. golf influencers. Where okay. yeah, this has never been done before. Yeah. So now, like before, mm -hmm. like it was always like these startup golf companies that were kind of they knew the value of influencers and all that stuff. Yeah. But now the big you know Fortune 500 companies yeah. are signing influencers. Yeah. Signing, putting money into it. It For was sure. where before they were like, we don't see the value. We, what's the value? You know, we, we normally yeah. sign our golf professional players. Yeah. But now they're signing on golf influencers or YouTubers and all that stuff. So, mm. so I like that. 
That's cool. My second prediction for 2023 YouTube is a bit of a goofy one, a bit of an obvious Ooh, one. Ooh, I like goofy. Shorts. I think shorts is going to exponentially increase because I don't think, uh, at least from what I'm understanding, TikTok's creator program or whatever program they have in place in order to pay out creators is just goofy in and of itself, right? Like you can even get more views than you did the previous month and make half the, half the amount of money. Really? Yeah, because basically it's like a pool and like it, just depending on, it's just kind of like, it's a little strange. I don't understand it fully uh, because I'm, I'm not really making TikTok content for revenue, but I think that with the advent of the monetization uh, within YouTube Shorts, we're going to see, I think it's gonna be slower than people accept, uh, expect, but we're gonna see creators start to upload to YouTube Shorts in conjunction with TikTok. I don't think they're gonna abandon TikTok, and I'll tell you why. The problem with YouTube and people really flooding to YouTube in lieu of just straight up uploading to TikTok is the fact that it takes a lot longer for the YouTube algorithm in Shorts to actually reach like a tipping point, right? Mm -hmm. So for instance, what we've seen and probably what you've seen too is I'm, I'm assuming is that it takes like anywhere from like two weeks to four weeks for a short to take off. And even later, longer than that sometimes. And even longer than that, right? And that's not, I don't believe that's due to the nature of like what YouTube says and what I've heard in interviews where it's like, oh yeah, you know, it's most likely taking off because it wasn't relevant and then it becomes relevant because it gets shared or blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's accurate. I think YouTube's playing it safe because of their his, their history with surfacing content that's that is content. inappropriate by nature. Ah, and I so see. I think they're playing it safe and newer creators that have, haven't uploaded shorts before don't actually have the opportunity that they think they do and they have to essentially consistently establish their ground in order to gain trust in the algorithm. I do think trust within the algorithm is a function of newer creators. However, I don't think it's a function of existing creators. I think it's all about audience um, and whether you're making good content. I think that's going to be the biggest thing that actually inhibits shorts growth is how long it takes. For instance, uploaded a short yesterday and it has over 500,000 views on TikTok. Oh. The same short has like 10,000 views on YouTube, right? Mm. And it's like, the audiences can't be that different to where there's such a huge margin. Okay, so a question, do you think that'll matter? Let's say, let's say there is four week delay. Yeah. Once you get posting regularly, it won't really matter because then you have all the videos that are popping off while you're posting. But I'll one. tell you why it does matter. It matters because the, the nature of how someone learns, right? So for instance, well, it, basically the, the, the learning mechanism, right? Of like, I upload, I get results, I make changes. Now is four weeks as opposed to TikTok, which is days. It's like a mm. couple days where it's like you post something, it doesn't take off and you go, I'm gonna alter my content strategy. I'm gonna alter my uh. ideas in order to not make the same mistake. Gotcha. Now, if you're on YouTube, you learn four weeks late. And you've already been pumping out content. Yeah. Okay, I so see. there's no way TikTok creators are going to abandon TikTok until this is fixed. So you think? Do you think they're going to be using TikTok to learn what's going to do well on Shorts? I don't know. Like I like I don't think that there is a one-to-one -one comparison between TikTok and YouTube. I think the audiences are different. Like I said, with the short that I uploaded, it's such a huge margin that it seems odd. So like, for instance, what I'm saying is I think the, the, the platform is different too, right? Where it's like, I do think that when you upload a short on YouTube, it actually sends to your subscribed users, right? And if it doesn't perform with your subscribed users, right? Your, subs your subscribers, it's going to be a lot more tentative on like if it actually sends it out to other people. And this is just how the YouTube algorithm has always worked, right? If it doesn't do well with your core audience that wants to watch your videos, it's not yeah, gonna do yeah, well with, with, the with the broader audience. Or it's gonna take a long time for YouTube to find the other audience for that video. That's even if they try and find it. That's like, even if they try and find it. Now, I don't think TikTok's doing that. I think TikTok is just testing it. They're just testing it in, in, a, in a bigger way across multiple audiences from the get-go, right? And that's how they can just send it out a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. I think it's because they're they're most likely testing that same, this is all just assumptions, but they're most likely testing that particular piece of content across a variety of different audiences from the start, as opposed to just testing it with the core audience yeah. first. 
but that's an assumption just based on how the, the behavior of the views. So, so what is your like? My prediction is that the transfer of TikTok to YouTube isn't going to be as big as people think it's as going dramatic. to be. It's, it's gonna... not going to be dramatic, right? People are not going to abandon TikTok in 2023, right? Okay. All right. However, on. there is going to be a, a lot more on YouTube. Look at that. Baby. We'll see. I try to cook this thing slow to get to the center. What are you saying? Don't break my heart. I mean, it's, it says 121 internal, which will end up at 125, which is a good medium rare. Okay. Daddy Hopefully likes. the warmth <laughs> penetrated. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a 14 and a half minute cook. That's a long time for this. Is that too long? The internal temperature said 121. So the internals aren't tough? No. Okay. Now, the outside might be a little more tough. Okay. But the inside will be, that's what I'm saying, like it can go longer, but it might overcook the outside. That's why it's important to leave your meat out for a good, healthy, chunky time. That's what she said. <laughs> Nessio, chuko. <laughs> Not easy. But look, now look. He set me up. I mean, look, look at the difference of what, all the residue and fat that was left yeah. in the skillet. What's the difference? I just see this one. It was, <laughs> it was dry. We did the first one and it yeah, was dry. Yeah, it was dry. It was dry. There was no fat in there. There's no fat. There's, There's no, no fat. fat. It was a good tasting steak once you cooked it properly, though. So I'm conflicted either that's Snake River or Walmart. But after Ooh. seeing this, this one's definitely gonna gonna be Grand Western or Grand Snake w River. I say Grand Western. I don't know anything about Grand Rest Grand Western. Grand Western. Grand Western. <laughs> What's right. uh okay. We're not let's just eat No, it. no, we gotta we gotta, we gotta <laughs> wait, bro. We gotta wait. Here, I'll let you look at it. With my fork and knife. I don't cut into it. Yo! <laughs> wait. <laughs> Don't do that, man. Come on. <laughs> no, we don't, don't we don't hey, joke about Hey, steaks, don't embarrass right? me like that, okay? Yeah. Don't right. embarrass me. Here's what I'm gonna do, dog. <laughs> do you think, so on the shorts topic, do you think you can become big and famous and popular and successful? <laughs> solely, <laughs> so, <laughs> and I want all of these things. <laughs> solely just doing YouTube shorts. Like same thing like how, there's TikTok famous people. Absolutely, I already know of people. That was a quick answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, what's, what's the guy's name? Simmons, he makes the apartment. Uh, he, walks, he walks around the street and goes, hey, wh what do you make? and like how much do you pay for rent and let's go look at your apartment. And uh, he was saying that he makes uh, anywhere from like 10 to $20,000 a month. I mean, he gets but, a massive amount of views and the, you know, those views if in long form content would equate to probably 10 times that, but. But didn't shorts just get, start getting monetized? I don't know, bro. I, I know he's making a lot of money though, is what I'm not, saying. Not on, you can't be on YouTube. I don't know how much people are making on YouTube, but I know on short form content, he's making money. So maybe I didn't understand your question. <laughs> <laughs> Just like how people become famous on TikTok famous, right? Yes. That try and cross over to Yeah, absolutely. YouTube. I, I absolutely think people can, can just start solely. On, just start on YouTube, bank on YouTube, and then go to oh, long Oh, you form. mean start on YouTube. Start on YouTube. I think it's possible. I think it's definitely harder. I think it would be foolish to not use TikTok and YouTube in conjunction with each other. But which, okay, which TikTok, I guess I, I really, I'm not on TikTok, but that you know of have made the crossover, maybe you guys know, have crossover from TikTok to YouTube. That guy, form. that guy that I'm talking about, he makes those videos and like he's actually having a decent amount of success on YouTube. Okay. With the longer form stuff? Uh, he also makes long form stuff. I haven't seen it. Is it as successful? I'll, well, let's find let's out. Find We're out. about right. to find out. Okay, hey, let's find out how <laughs> successful I made this thing. Talking about ready? success. Am I just cutting this in half, like uh, right look down at the, the center? Grain. No, see, they're going, the grain's going this way. Okay. Go this way. Go this way? Hey man, whatever, whatever you need to do. And I get you bumper guards too that we can yeah, lay down with. It's, it's a niche <laughs> way of cutting things, but. Nishi. <laughs> oh, we go with that gust of wind. Oh, that was so, I barely had to do anything, bro. Oh, dang. Okay, it's more on the medium side. More on the medium side, but it'll get a little redder. You might have okay. butchered it. <laughs> no, that's medium. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's I may getting have there. That. It's getting there. This one's a little better looking. If you want to see this. Oh side. yeah, show them the good side. Don't show them the bad. That's medium. Look at that. Well done. <laughs> not well done. But... <laughs> no, well done. I agree. No, it's not well done, bro. That's a medium. Look at that. That's medium. That's what I'm talking about. All right, which side do you want? This one's a little bit bigger, but it's a little. You take the bigger one. I'll, or whatever you don't. I'll take the overcooked <laughs> side. I'll take that side. I don't care, dude. I don't care. <laughs> it's either. all gonna taste amazing. <laughs> all right, let me try. It's just so soft. Bro, where'd it go? It's gone. Like you, cotton candy. Like cotton candy. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. If this is Walmart, bro, I'm going to lose my this mind. This isn't Walmart. Oh, my goodness gracious. And that was, I just ate the most overcooked part of it. 
Was that an insult? Yes, 100%. <laughs> was it? Yeah. No. Yeah, it was. But look, come on. Bro, this one's phenomenal. I just want to chime in here real quick. I know you guys are loving this one. Remember, you got to leave at least a little piece for this. We'll see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we can just, you know, put a hole in the uh, cutting here. board. Here's, here's our piece. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bro. Sam, try this. She came here and she was like, I've tried good steak before. Same thing that Wood said. She's like, I've been to Buca de Beppo or whatever she said. It doesn't Buca even de matter. Beppo. It doesn't even matter what she said. But she said something crazy. So now let's see. Mm, mama. <laughs> I told you. I like, don't want to swallow it. <laughs> yeah, the ju let the juices just flow. Sean and Isaiah have to try this. Yeah. Get your forks. Here, try it. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> you want to try it? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Try, 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 try this one. Bro, I forgot you're back there, dude. Wow. You're quiet. Oh, you're on set. I can't talk. Yeah, true. You're mad. What are you doing? <laughs> This one's good. I like the first one better though. What? That one tastes a little fatty. That's the point, bro! Who doesn't like a little fatty? That's just not my style. I can, <laughs> I, I can tell it's a lot more expensive though. He likes the deep red meat. I'm just used to what I grew up with. Yeah, yeah. Which was the cheap stuff. You know? <laughs> hey, it's really good though. It's good. It's, it's tasty. Okay, I'm, I'm voting. I've never seen that steak before and I think that's what it is. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, honestly, I'm gonna say the exact same but thing. But did you realize how it was, even from the beginning, it was pinker. A lot more fat. I'm more no, fat but even the yo. redness was pinker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm full of greens. <laughs> You're not supposed to agree with me. You're supposed to yeah, fight or no, something. I want to fight you, dude. Come on, let's argue about <laughs> this. All right, what's the next one? Honestly, I think that's probably one of my favorite ones we've ever that's, had. It was so tasty, dude. I would love for you to make that again for me. Oh, yes, <laughs> tomorrow. Here's the next steak. Dude, that looks just like darker. What's wrong with darker? Well, what's I don't know, dark meat? actually. Huh? What's, what's wrong with dark meat? I don't know how to answer this. <laughs> there is no right answer for you. <laughs> okay, go on. I really don't know what I was gonna say. I was just gonna say it's darker. <laughs> and then I was gonna stop it there. <laughs> I'm impressed that I can't tell which one's the Walmart one. Mm. But I think. Look how red this one got. Look how red this one got. <laughs> That's, right, That's kind of weird. <laughs> Put that in my tummy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay. That's why vegans don't like it. That's how they see it. Bro, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna have to taste it. I think this might be Snake River. Yeah, because if you look at the right one, the right one to me, it looks like there's more marbling on, on that than the nah, one that we- It, it kind of had the same thing. The way this is cut, looks like a Snake River's product to me. How does, how can you tell? Bro, I'm just trying to sound like I know what I'm saying, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but, yeah, definitely. It, to me, when you look at it and, and you feel- I No, but know. I do think this might be, I changed my mind. I think, I think this is Snake River. So I'm, you think I'm right here with my Walmart over here? I, it wasn't a bad steak. I don't know. To be honest, it's a toss-up. Walmart. So what are you doing here, Brian? Just salting the crap out of it. Wow. I don't know how else you would suggest doing this, but I'm just putting well, all the salt here. Let's read some comments down below. Let's ask them. So, all right, how do you guys salt a fatty filet? I mean, this seems like it works. Bro, look how thick this is. Yeah. Was that even on? Ooh, no, it's not. Back up! What does that mean? I think it was just leaking gas for a little bit. Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Brian, what? what is your third prediction for YouTube in 2023? AI generated what? 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 Go, you say it. AI generated um, content, meaning like video. AI generated video. Elaborate. So I've been dabbling. This might go along the lines of like, this might be a channel idea I'm giving away right now. I don't know. Anyways. Live streaming, right? You're talking about live streaming. I don't know exactly no, but I know people are gonna be creating, not just how to use it, creating content, whether short form, long form, utilizing those tools. Are you talking about the idea of VTubers? Or are you talking about the content itself was AI generated? Or are you talking about using the tools? I mean, honestly, what did you say, VTubers? Uh, virtual tubers. Like those have actually been a thing for, I don't know if they've ever been super popular. I, you guys can inform me down in the comments below, but I do know that VTubers are basically YouTubers who have like some form of digital avatar that they use for lack of a better term as a mask. Hmm. Yeah, I don't understand. To conceal their identity. Uh... 
Mm. I'm talking about, I don't specifically know, but it's not just gonna be, hey, I made this video with the, with the help of you know, an AI editor. It's gonna be whatever the content you're gonna be yeah. watching and being entertained by. Is gonna be created by Created AI? by AI. Interesting. Example, I did a little test with my brother Marvin, who looks like me, but a little rougher and tougher. So we did a fun little challenge where I say, hey, Marvin, I wanna see if I can describe you. Yeah. To, was it the, what's AI. the Mid Journey? Mid Whatever. Journey, sure. I want to see. Stable Diffusion. I'm going to do my best to describe you and see if I can, how close I can get to you. You tell me if this looks like Marvin. <laughs> okay. Marvin and I were both <laughs> dying. And to me, it's like, look how much fun we had doing this. Like, yeah. And I'm telling you, like, I bet you someone will do this. It's a live stream where they, you pull in the community. People are already doing that. It's just going to get bigger. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not sure about the function of it live yet, but people are making videos where I don't see why straight you up, like, adding someone's, you know, like, if you've seen, there's a Joe Rogan one floating around where a guy actually took a picture of Joe Rogan, attached his own facial movements to it, and then AI'd his own voice to sound like Joe Rogan, right? And if, you know, I would say by the end of the year, that'll fool people for sure. Oh, I bet you it's already fooling people now. Dumb people. Oh, found it. <laughs> found it. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. Okay, so this is the description I gave. I said, a 30-year-old Guatemalan man, muscular build, beard. This is your uh, prompt? Uh, this is my well-kept beard. Yeah. Hair parted to the right. <laughs> hair parted to the yeah. so specific. Watch it. In right hand, beads on the left wrist. Beads on the left he wrist? Had, he had a wristband that was like oh, a beaded wristband. You were describing Marvin. Marvin. That's, That's right. Ooh. That's why we're here. Okay, I gotta slow that stuff yeah, down. Yeah, that's, that's his one. <laughs> Can you see that? I think the bottom, right, one of the bottom ones. Yeah, the bottom, the this this one right here could definitely be related to you. Yes, or that might be the one I was actually thinking about. No, it's this one. It's this one. Yeah, that's like if if Kevin bulked up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> And that, that looks like it can be my dad. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This year, I think it's gonna be, maybe not as, not gonna like blow up, but it's gonna be, you're gonna see a lot of, I would say, my prediction is content creators based off of something around that mold where they're, that what you're seeing yeah. is AI generated, not, oh, uh, AI cut out all the ums and the ahs and the yeah, dead space. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is so funny because my prediction is AI related too. Okay. My prediction though is a bit different and I feel like this is a certainty. I'm like 99% sure, right? And I'm not sure how we're gonna be able to actually validate this. Well, just in bookmark a year. this video. No, like, but I mean like, you know, scientifically validate it. But I, I really believe that in a really big way that creators, most, most modern creators will abandon their existing tools and move over to AI tools, which will allow them to be prolific in an entirely new way, right? So what I mean by that is they're going to, let's say, move away from Premiere, you know, move away from Final Cut, move away from these, what I'll call legacy tools, and they'll jump into tools like Descript or, or uh, what's the other tool, Wise, Wise, Film oh, yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like yeah. that, and uh, or uh, Runway ML, right? Um, machine learning, I'm assuming, yeah. Okay. And so there's a bunch of tools that are being built right now that are dramatically reducing the skill level needed to create content mm. at uh, a medium level, right? So in other words, like Descript is a tool. These are not. This is not sponsored, but Descript is a very interesting tool that was first designed, I think, a couple of years ago for podcasts, right? And when it first launched, it was it was pretty innovative in and of itself, in that it, with one click, could edit all the silence out of your videos. In one click, could remove all the filler words in your videos. I literally took a live stream of mine that was two hours, and it cut, I would say. 40 minutes out of it. And all I did was remove silence and filler words. I think it's a mistake to cut those out. You think it's a mistake to yeah. cut those out? Because in normal conversations, that's what you hear. I think it depends on why the viewer's watching the video. If the viewer's watching the video for a sense of human connection, like they might be in this particular video, right? They might be like, they want to sit back and they want to hear what these two guys are Natural hanging out. Conversation. They want to have, they want to watch a conversation. Yes, I would agree with you. It might be, uh, it might not be fortuitous to cut out those ums and ahs. However, if they're watching a tutorial, that's gonna annoy True. the heck out of them. True. If they're watching like a Mr. Beast video and they're looking for the next hit every like 10 seconds, mm -hmm. 
I don't think I don't think that would be profitable in that sense. I would agree. But going back to your AI, yeah, I think we can measure it. You can measure it by how many of these AI companies are being bought by oh. Adobe. <laughs> yeah, bought yeah. Bought by all like final uh, Apple. So Man, can... I think Adobe is too late though. So Sam brought up there's a, this AI streamer, right? Um, what's it called? Nothing forever. Yeah, you've probably seen a decent amount of YouTubers create content about how it's toxic, I think, and obviously it's, uh, that's what I've seen. And that it's, uh, you know, generating questionable material because it's fully AI, right? And it's like live streaming and, and uh, pe you know, up to 10,000 people are watching it. I think that's interesting. And I think it's definitely, to your point, a trend in 2023. However, even to the people who are making that content right now, it's gonna die. I just, it's gonna, it has to die. Because what the problem is, is that all those tools, right now there's a barrier of entry, right? Right now to get into stable diffusion, right? To actually train models to do all of these things, there's a, a relatively large barrier of entry that you have to basically understand at the very minimum, like terminal in your computer to actually install all these files, to download all these tools, and then to speak some form of like, uh, programming language in order to interface with that. Even after you just install all of the base level requirements for your machine, and not only that, you have to have NVIDIA cards. It's a whole thing. Not anybody can jump. You have to have like an M1 Mac or NVIDIA cards, and so there's there's a big barrier of enter, entry right now. However, those tools within this year, I absolutely agree with you, are going to be widely accessible. But once they're widely accessible, everyone's gonna be using it. And if everyone's using it, then what ends up mattering? Story. What ends up mattering is the ability to differentiate your AI from this other Joker's AI. Then it becomes just another genre with competition. Again, to your point, I definitely think it's gonna be a huge trend, but I don't think there's any staying power in it. I think there's value to learning it, because then you can pro probably use all those tools in order to create something unique and compelling. But if you're resting on those tools to be all the content generation, I, I think it's you're gonna be a flash in the pan. Well, think of this way, because this goes into the story side of it. What do people on YouTube like? They like to feel like they're part of the community, like they're yeah. part of it, right? So you've seen those, the back of cereal boxes, right? Where it fill in the adjective, fill in this, right? Yeah. Think of, uh, let's say, hey guys, like let's say this week's episode, yeah. we're gonna create the story of Brian and Matthew, yeah. where are you guys gonna send us? Yeah. Fill in the blanks, like whatever, the most top voted, whatever, however you wanna accumulate yeah. keywords, a story, and we're gonna input it into chat GPT. Yeah. It's gonna write us a full script. Mm -hmm. The audience is like, ooh, I'm, well you don't know what the story is because yeah. the, the chat or the AI still has to generate. It. Yeah. So now it's like you're waiting for like, what's this week's episode, Where? The, what's the story, what's the... Yeah, so the question I have then, is a YouTuber such as you or me even relevant at that point? Because yeah, I, I, if, it's, if it's just about interaction, you could e easily bypass the creator and just have the site be the creator. But then is it amassing the audience? So no, I think there I has think to so. be some sort of like... There, there still needs to be a human component to where like, hey guys, like, where are you gonna send us this, 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 in this yeah, exactly. episode, right? Uh, there, there has to be some level of like higher level storytelling, higher level curation correct. from a human in order to connect all these dots to make it meaningful for the audience to tell a broader story that yeah. AI is just not gonna be able to tell. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that one. I, I think that I think the question is whether or not AI Man, can generate something meaningful. this stuff is taking meaningful. so long to get to the center. I like a good crust though, so that doesn't bother me. Normally you wanna get a solid crust by like rapidly, like high heat, quick sear, but this is, look at all the fat right there. That's what you wanna lick, but it'll That's burn. what you wanna <laughs> lick. <laughs> yeah, so if you guys are wondering how I'm fitting three steaks in my stomach. I've fasted. Before this, I ate half an apple, and right now it's 5 p.m. So I intentionally fasted for this moment to consume as much steak as humanly possible before getting sick. So if you doubted my commitment, don't do it again. <laughs> All right, you got a plate? This one's done. Uh, yeah, my beer was great. I'd love it. I would drink this again. Good beer, great beer, 1925 like that. I love the bottle though, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's not a bottle that you'd say. This is a bottle that you'd put flowers in and then give to your wife after you're a little tipsy, obviously. <laughs> I'm gonna say this, not 100% confident. <laughs> Every single thing you've ever cooked. Bruh. No. Uh, I don't know what I did here. <laughs> well, no, because I'm telling you, it was, it's just when they were so cold, I don't know. Yeah, so we gotta figure out how to get them to your house in, in a way that you can cook them properly. Exactly.
Mm, he's a steak genius. Give him his time. What if we just sous vide everything? Doesn't that take forever though? That's not, there's no fun in sous vide. I'd rather, I'd rather watch a steak sizzle for, you know, 20 minutes than watch a steak boil. I agree. That's just me though. What do you guys think? Okay. Don't you have a plate? Or are these both for me? I don't know why I do that. Do I know the plate? <laughs> oh, it's hanging on by a, <laughs> by a strand. You cut into it. I want to see you cut into it. I always like, I don't you like eating really first. You want to make fun of my uh, niche way of cutting it? Oh, this is hard. I'm, it was a thick stick and it was cold. What well, else am I supposed I'm to do? just making an observation. I don't know why I got so aggressive got with that so response. so defensive. <laughs> I got very defensive. You got so <laughs> defensive. I just noticing a difference in the steak. I, that's, that's what I'm here to do, dude. I'm here to, to communicate my experience. <laughs> I got all like, my, I got, what do you want from me? It's like, get my back. <laughs> I went like Italian. Wait, what do you want to know about it? <laughs> I'm like, bro, I didn't even know that was an offensive thing to say about a steak, dude. All I right. try to take pride in the steaks I cook, and when I'm, oh man, oh, I'm not very. Oh, this is this. this is tough, dude. Oh, That's pretty tough, bro. Hold on, I'm gonna cut this in half. Now get the center. Yeah, get the center. That's better. See? It's better. A little over. That's what I'm talking about. No, we mean that's medium rare right there. Well done, that's Brian. Medium rare? Yes, 120 degrees. I don't know if I believe him, but okay. <laughs> Let's Bro. see if it passes hey, the taste test. Look at, what do you mean? Look at that. What am I? Yeah, okay. Apologize to me for offending me. I apologize. Oh, actually, I didn't think we were going to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. Oh, yeah, it's the blood's coming out. I just Bro. need to see. I just, Bro, I just need to see a little bit more center. blood. Look at that. It just looks a little dry. But I will say, this is definitely the cheapest steak out of all of them. Oh, what's wrong with it? It's tough, bro. You think this one's Walmart then? Yeah, this has got to be Walmart. Oh, I can taste it, bro. For this real? is Walmart. No. It's gotta be. I mean, it's still good. That flavor is good though. Not in the center. The crust is what tastes good. But that's probably because we're tasting the other steaks. Just take a bite out of the center. That's what I'm doing. Oh yeah, dude, that's... No, no, you're eating some crust there. Take, just cut off the crust and eat the center. Why would I want to cut off? It's a full experience. It's not like, hey, you buy a taco, hey, just eat the meat. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's better than the first one? No. <laughs> no. No, no. This is Walmart. I think this is Snake Rivers. No, there's no way. This is Walmart. This is but definitely if it's all Walmart. But if it's all wag... No. <laughs> what you say? Bro, I don't know. Even though this is like this doesn't compare to the other one, the last one we had, this is pretty still darn good. Not a bad steak, but I mean like, you know, when you're back to back with like one of the best steaks in the world. Look at that. Mm -mm. Well done, Brian. Or medium rare, Brian. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm happy to just put that right there, that, that much of the steak. See this? I'm gonna take my little thing here out of this. I'm gonna put that in there. And then I'm gonna go. Get a close up of that. Look at that. Look, what, That's a good medium rare right there. And then I'm gonna go here with the Snake River Farms. That's an ugly looking steak though now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What's it? This is, this is what counts. Let's see what he says. We're gonna agree on all of them? You don't have to agree with me. Hey, create some fake drama. Pick something else. But the way they looked. <laughs> <laughs> you just make the choice, I can't. Dude. I know. I don't know why I'm struggling so much. You just don't want me to be right. But I cooked that so well, but it's not so tender. So that must be. Those are our final choices, Sam. Hey guys, I'm here uh, to let you know where these are all from. <laughs> <laughs> really serious about it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so the first steak was from Snake River Farms. What do you mean? I'm the one that was. I, I went with that originally. Bro. You went with that originally, <laughs> but then the minute mind. I tasted this steak, I was like, wrong. We're both right. I mean, <laughs> but I was more right. I was right first. <laughs> the next steak is from Walmart.com. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Runs into the pool, dude. What? It was Nordic Selections from Walmart.com. Bro. What? I love being wrong. Nordic it selection. It makes my day, dude. A5 Japanese. You can get this on Walmart? Walmart Bro, I'm going to Walmart today. I will say it was $169. So it was expensive. But yeah, that's the one that's from Walmart. And so the final one was from Grand Western. That one sucks, <laughs> dude. Bro, I'm walking around like, well, I know what I'm talking about. Bro, I am so impressed with Walmart. Bro, this is the format of the show right here. We don't get to know until the end, and we try three different steaks. I love this format. And then the guest has to also decide too. Normally Japanese Wagyu, it's just like simple packaging. You get to serve with where it's from. That was the best steak you've made here. The Walmart one. Can we just play back a short montage of all of my elitist behavior? I want to see it back to back, just for my own edification and comedy. When we said Walmart, I, I said, surely you jest. I will say, this is definitely the cheapest steak out of all of them. Yeah, this has got to be Walmart. 
Oh, I can taste it, bro. No, no, this is Walmart. No, there's no way. This is Walmart. Oh my goodness gracious. If this is Walmart, bro, I'm going to lose my mind. This isn't Walmart. I bet you were sitting back there oh, just dude, dying I was laughing. Dying. The whole time that you guys were like, this is the best steak I've ever had. This is the best steak in the world. Like, this is amazing. I was trying so hard to not make eye contact because I was like, I know that the second I look at either of you. You did a good job. It would be over. You did a good job. Walmart. I gotta, I gotta watch you now. Okay, what was the price? So I'm assuming. Okay, this one was I, not as expensive for sure. So, None of them were. Correct. So uh, Snake River, we got three six ounces for 183 dollars. <clears throat> three six ounces. Okay. Walmart, uh, just the one for 169 dollars. Grand Western, we got four six ounces for 282 dollars. Bro, this was an expensive video. Four? Yeah, I didn't run Dude, the I just ate. You, but... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we just ate a thousand dollars worth of steak. Good title, fun. Bro, hey. I ain't mad. I'm not bro. mad either, but I might be in the bathroom for a while. N no, bro, with all this fatty meat, it's just gonna <laughs> I love a good twist, dude. <laughs> bro, we were all... <laughs> Next time we need, we need like almost identical everything. Yes, so we need to do all A5s, all whatevers. All gold grade. Yes, and I do think we should probably sous vide those, because then you get the same cook. You get the same for all of them. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this longer episode, please do let us know down in the comments below. It doesn't really make a difference in, to the algorithm, whether you're commenting or liking the video, but it does make a difference to us because mm. that helps us know if we should make more stuff like this. So feel compelled to comment right now. If you want more of this, just say more, please. Like literally, you don't have to be creative with it. I just need to know. I just want to know. Or medium rare, please. Me <laughs> medium rare, please. <laughs> rare, please. And like, again, so the other questions, make sure you answer those as well. If you enjoyed this uh, you know keep watching and we uh, we appreciate you bye steaks bye steaks <laughs>